My name is Bovis. I am Supply Specialist. My job is to make for the taking of supplies from one place to other place. Anything standing in way of our place is not standing much longer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Evangelist and Mastermind Creations reformatted line has jumped from 1 to 3 as it debuts the long, long, long awaited Feralcon team. This is Bovis, the supply specialist, whose release was bumped up to allow Talon to have some extra development time before his production. Carrying on the tradition of one that started with Hexatron, the box of Bovis uses magnets on its front flap. All fancy like. Now, I'm no bull expert, but a cursory Google image search has taught me that Bovis is like a mixture between a bull and a battering ram. He's a lot wider than your average horny bovine and also lacks a tail. However, he carries this girth so well, I have been well won over by it. For such a creature of unreal proportions, his proportions kind of play ball with his size real nicely. He's also covered in surface detail, though it feels like a calmer version of the usual Mastermind treatment. There are some smooth surfaces of notable size. Overall, it feels like MMC went out of their way to ease this initial Feral Con's skin texture a bit more towards official modern Transformers toys, even if it's only a half-step or so in that direction. The paintwork is simple and well-applied, with a lot of the major patches of hue conveyed more so through the base plastic tone, and the colors feel deliciously on topic. And oh, the debates over the colors, the long discussions over Pantones that several times drove me far away from the Feral Rex mega thread on TFW. There's a satisfaction in seeing the final colors in hand, partly because they're the result of a lot of careful thinking, and partly because they aren't open to any further pre-production discussion. Bovis has four hard points for his four weapons, the paired electro cutters and paired catalytic carbines. These ports can also accept a variety of other add-ons, leading to the all too amusing practice of weaponizing the robot cow. The twin mortar cannon has a flip down clip that allows it to plug hardcore securely over top of Bovis's back, giving a strongly headstrong vibe and finishing off the optional appearance of a mechanical bull that's coated in weaponry. Jumping Jiminy Cricket, ladies and gentlemen, this is a bull with a twin mortar cannon on his back and he's got shotguns on his legs and he's got stabbing knives if for some reason his stabbing bullhorns don't, you know, horrifically kill you. Nothing is nice about him, he's a bull covered in weaponry, but let's strip it off for now so I can give you a better look at how his poseability works and none of this stuff really gets in the way of the bull mode poseability. It, uh just obstructs the view because the last thing anyone expects from something like this is for the bull mode to be posable I think but uh, hey guess what it is the rear legs are on a uh, bit of a ball joint connection and if you want there's a little bit of super outward motion thanks to a ratcheting joint inside there uh, <laughs> it's a bull that can do the splits uh, the other leg is pretty much identical in terms of its range uh, there's a little bit more forward and backwards range here as there's nothing here and to get in the way and it also has that uh, deployable super stretch so this guy can show some leg that is not all though the uh, red shins I don't know what the bull anatomy is like anyway those are on a ball joint connection which means that they don't have like a full crunch in any one direction but there is a decent range of movement forwards and backwards and left and right and then to top it off, the hoof is on a ball joint with a sick ankle tilt. So this is clearly a good normal modern toy. Ha 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 ha, that's so funny! So uh, between all of that, this guy can look like more than a box on stilts. You can get a really cool, like, I guess kind of feral looking pose. Like he's, he's about to just mess someone's day up, like he's going to charge at them, or he's just like, get out of my way. And I did all that stuff off screen because I really care about you and your safety. Anyway, aside from leg posability, you can also turn his head like this, which I guess so you can look quizzical, or you can, you know, kill him. Uh, the horns are also posable, so if you don't like them being straightforward like they are out of the box, pull, put them up. Go ahead, do it. His mouth opens, uh, although if you open his mouth, it's, it's a little bit weird. This seems to be a compromise for the transformation. You open his mouth up, and there's a man inside. 
There ain't nothing normal about that. Now you can flip this face around for open mouth poses to look normal, but then when you close his mouth, there's a, I don't know. Anyway, I, I can't see an easy compromise for this other than like an internal sub flap, like a, like a tongue in here. So I don't know, if there's any design oversight, it would be lack of a tongue. And I, I guess that's a pretty damning criticism. You hear me, Griffith? You hear me, Sark? Where's my tongue? I wanted a posable bull tongue. Uh, the head also has a left to right joint, which is really freaking cool for a bull, because this thing's usually compressed in. And I was sitting here going like, well, I guess the one thing that's missing is the ability for the bull to look left and right. Then I pulled on this and was like, oh, the bull can kind of look left and right. Or you can just be all like, nah, son. Nah, son. Nah, son. Bovis transforms in a way that pointedly takes what could have been simple and adds twists and turns that feel like the result of someone saying, no, I want the other mode to be able to do this too. The legs contain most of the crazy stuff, starting off with rotating panels that bulk up the biped thighs and going into one of the craziest parts flips I've seen in a while, where the robot foot practically moves through its attached panel to flip over in place. The rear bull legs curl up and lock in tight, something we'll see many more times in this transformation. Unfurling from the frontal bovine limbs, the robot arms are a simpler affair that still show some cool tricks. Namely, the actual bull leg waits for the arm to finish its moves and then folds up and locks in hardcore to the point of resting over a nub that helps prevent it from so much as wiggling. Finally, the face of Bovis flips over from the underside of the bull's mouth, completing the conversion and making one wonder that if his head is such a thin panel, is it just a decoy? Is his true intelligence contained within the horned cranium of his so-called alternate mode? Who knows? Who knows? This robot man, made of cow, takes his bovine beef cakery and spreads it over a bipedal form with a carefully calculated crafting of bombastic bulk. Bovis has the look of a heavyset fellow who will barely blink at an oncoming mortar shell. His bull mode legs have hugged themselves against his armor, and his now split robot mode legs reveal some really cool mechanical detailing on the inside of his shins. And that face, that growling, gaunt-cheeked grimace of bared teeth and perpetual impatience, Bovis looks generally unhappy with the world around him in a most endearing way. The hugely part-secured state of Bovis's robot mode also gives him a surprising cleanliness of visual aesthetic, despite the chunky armor and copious detailing that adorns him. It's so solidly built, my only major problem lies in the red flaps over his feet. They don't have a locking point, like a detent or something, though they are meant to move fluidly with his ankle posture. It feels good to have to get so bottom-of-the-bucket nitpicky in order to have anything bad to say here. Aside from the built-in triple cannons on the outer side of either of his legs, Bovis can now make handheld use of his electro cutters and catalytic carbines, though you can still use his bull mode hard points as well. His hands use a similar system to Hexatron, despite not having posable fingers, and the tunnel you stick the handles into is just tight enough to make things a bit difficult to slide in. In fact, getting him to hold the electro cutters is a little scary, as they have to halfway snap in due to the lack of clearance for simply sliding the handle into Bovis his palms. There are also new hard points on the sides of the thighs, but I've found the holes slightly too wide for the carbines and unable to grip their side pegs securely. You can also sort of store weapons on his back, but this too feels less secure than I'd like. The twin mortar launcher can mount on Bovis's back via a series of tabs and slots, and astoundingly only kind of puts a hiccup into his center of balance. Thanks to his enormous standing base and ratcheted legs, it's not hard to keep Bovis standing despite the burden on his shoulders. However, Bovis can also hold the launcher in front of him in a way that makes the weapon look like it weighs a ton, no matter how well he's supporting it upright. I love the look of this guy personally using a piece of artillery braced against nothing but his own body. You know what the best shared third-party trend is right now? Credit card, bio card, trading cards. Anyway, this is Bovis in his robot mode, and the dude has some joints, let me tell you what. His head can turn left and right, as you do, although the horns seem to bang into the shoulders, don't they? There's a solution for this, because the shoulders, they're on ball joints, so they can be all like that. But, as you saw in the bull mode, uh, they have that hinge bit so they can fold outwards and then move out a little bit on the ball joint, and kind of had to get a broader shouldered look. Uh, it does make the 
connection a little bit gappy looking from some angles so you can close it up if you want but with these out you also now have room for the horns to get around whatever and also uh, you can pull this thing up and you can have him tilt his head like that oh and you can also have him look up you can uh, well you can't really get him to look down you can imagine he's looking down because he's got sunglasses on but you can't get him to look up which is kinda cool and then if you really want to be cool you can do Mantar mode. And uh, I don't know if there's anything else to really say about this except for Mantar mode. Uh, let's just solve his tongue problem here. Alright, so his shoulders otherwise have a decent range of posability, especially once you extend the uh, hinged bit out. They more or less have universal range. They can go out pretty darn far. He's got double jointed elbows. The one weird thing about the elbows is that they don't actually straighten out all the way. There's a curve to them uh, if you fold them like this. If you fold that bit in, there's an even bigger curve. So this is the straightest you can get them to look. That may bug some people. I know there is a sect of collectors who do like to be able to show robots in the old, like, 70s, 80s, standing stock still like a stick man pose. So you can't actually do that with Bovis. Uh, he always has a little bit of curvature going on. Uh, his wrists turn. His biceps swivel, his waist turns, and then being a mastermind toy, uh, this seems to be like their trademark thing now. He's also got these side skirts, and they're each on an individual ring that can move around. He's also got some ratchet jointing going on in the hips, kind of soft click going forwards and backwards, and a louder soft click going outwards, as well as a little bit of that goodness on the knees, and a thigh swivel. He's got flaps. Do you have flaps on the bottoms of your legs? You don't? Well, maybe you're small time. His feet are interesting. Uh, in terms of just what they do and ignoring the engineering behind it, uh, they can tilt. They can move forwards and backwards decently. And there's a toe joint. Doesn't work like your usual average toe joint. The way I find this thing works best is if you orient the leg like this, rotate this back and blah blah, and now you can have the guy looking kind of like he's walking. Posability wise, Bovis does it for me because this dude can hunch and he can like look up and he can just be on the approach like he is ready to come and foul up your day. Uh, oh, by the way, in terms of durability, because uh, Piov beat me to this with his Admittedly, even slightly lower plastic quality test shots of these guys that he had at TFCon. Um, these things are built to survive, and Piaw was encouraged to do stuff like this, so I figured we could get a little Tetrajet here, take our roundabouts $100 toy, and just f fling it back there. I don't want to fling it too hard, because I suspect that much like the bull mode that is his alt mode, this guy might go through the modular wall of the back of my backdrop. I'm actually I was holding on to it at the top here to make sure nothing went awry, but he's uh, able to take pretty good head plants, pretty good face plants, and the only thing that uh, we've noticed in the collective collectordom that we are uh, that can go wrong is in his packaging, the black paint on these things might get a little bit scuffed. Bovis carries the sometimes unenviable task of being the first member of a combining team. Unenviable in that he has to spend the longest time running solo on a collector's shelf. And he really carries that role with gusto. He's heavily armed and built for a varied enough play pattern that he's a ton of fun all by himself. And that makes me incredibly excited for the rest of the Feral Cons. I've not had combiner hype like this since Exgraver Instructor arrived at my house. If the other Feral Cons have this much standalone play value, they may be one of the most fearsomely fun five sims to come out in a long time. And man, Bovis has such a hidden hype bomb in his box. He's this fun toy with loads of weapons, and the biggest one is all like, Oh, by the way, I come apart into a foot and a hand for something you don't have yet. You're tempted and goaded into testing out Bovis' foot mode, and the structural integrity of that form is so strong that I am aching to see the final combined assembly of Feral Rex in production plastic. This toy is built solid, built dense, built heavy, and built with a care and love that invisibly coats its plastic in a way that's hard to ignore. I've many times praised Mastermind Creations for their build quality and design care, ever since they bounced back from the misstep of the original Night Morpher Commander, and Bovis gives the soothing impression that Feral Rex will be the greatest example of those qualities to date. Well, to the date of the release of the fifth Feralcon, at least. 
So yes, I entirely feel Bovis is a solid toy, worth your purchase if he's within your budget. His aesthetics are kind of wild and push things pretty hard in the ludicrous spikes and blades direction, despite feeling a lot more mellow than Hexatron. So of course, if those aesthetics don't click with you, I've got very little that can change your mind, other than the assurance that the physical toy is a tactile joy for the fingers. Feral Rex has more than a year of anticipation behind him, and the first of his number does not disappoint me whatsoever. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Vangelis, and it's been quite a ride handling the resin prototype of this guy, followed by Piaw's late production test shot, capped off with a box copy of the final figure. I hope the next four rides end just as happily. And I hope doing five rides at once doesn't mess up my head, man. I'm already starting to feel a bit nauseous from all the loop-de-loops and all the... Oh, oh God. Oh! So... Pose a... Pose a... <laughs>